What's up guys, in this video, I wanna do a realistic comparison of Amazon KDP with other major business models. So welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean and I've built a multiple six figure publishing brand, which I eventually sold for $820,000 and I am building a second KDP account right now. So. Everything that I do, I kind of share on this YouTube channel. Uh, all my income that I'm making, I do an income report almost every single month if I don't forget about it. So everything is added into this playlist called the KDP Income Reports playlist. So if you guys wanna follow me along in this journey, you guys can go and check out the playlist as well as subscribe. Uh, but if you do like, you know, no BS publishing advice from someone who is actually doing it, then make sure to subscribe and uh, follow me along. So let's get started here. Um, in this video, I wanted to just share my thoughts on comparing KDP with uh, the five most popular business models that I know a lot of people consider when they're looking into business models to make money online or, you know, just make money in general, not just online. And this is something that I think about all the time. You know, I constantly ask myself, is KDP the best business out there or is it simply the one that I had the most success with? Um, and so I always research and I analyze, you know, other business models too. I watch a ton of videos, I test it out myself and I constantly compare it with KDP and publishing. And here's my honest thoughts on, you know, what I think is the difference and what I think is the best business. So in this video, we're gonna talk about Amazon FBA affiliate marketing, trading or day trading, uh, agency and service-based business, and real estate stocks and crypto. So I kind of bunched, you know, real estate stocks, crypto all in one as like investing. But we're going to compare all five of these uh, ways to make money online uh, with KDP. Uh, the quick disclaimer is that this is just my personal opinion, okay? And the reason why I still do KDP, despite knowing all these other business models, and hopefully if you're looking into, you know, different business models, considering maybe KDP and different uh, businesses, this will be beneficial for you. So let's get started with FBA. So FBA versus KDP. Both of these are Amazon based business, which is the biggest thing about this is they both get Amazon traffic. And that's like one of the best things about building a business under Amazon, you know, is that there's already existing customers going to Amazon and there are a ton of organic sales that you can get once you rank your product, okay? Because once again, people are already going to Amazon looking for products. So if you can just show up in front of them, that is how you can tap into organic uh, sales, which kind of leads into the passive income aspect of it, okay? The thing that is different uh, with FBA is that with FBA, you need to deal with shipping and customer service, where with KDP, you do not have to do it. With KDP, everything is handled by Amazon. But with FBA, from my understanding, you got to deal with shipping, you got to deal with customer service as well. Uh, and you're dealing with physical products. Uh, and a lot of this is like the two biggest things when it comes to business, the two biggest source of headache is shipping and handling and customer service. So that is why if you think in terms of, you know, low stress, um, very minimalistic setup in terms of business, then KDP would win, right? Both of this requires you to test products. Uh, with FBA, you gotta test physical products and see what sells. With KDP, you have to test different book topics and see what sells. Uh, so there's testing on both sides, which is the case with literally any other business too. But with KDP, it's much cheaper. You know, oftentimes the production cost of these books are much cheaper than the manufacturing cost of actual physical products. Another thing with FBA is you're dealing with physical products. So the thing with physical products is it has lower margins because you have to actually create, manufacture the product and also you know, do the whole shipping and handling thing, uh, which is a headache, especially now that the world is, you know, kind of still shut down, right? So digital products, in my opinion, is much better. And yes, KDP has the physical product side with the paperback, but a lot of it is digital products, ebook, audiobook. Um, so the profit margin is much higher. And, you know, that is like a huge, huge pro. So in conclusion, you know, both Amazon based business, but in my opinion, KDP offers much more of a lifestyle business, which is kind of key 
uh, with no shipping and handling, customer service, and it's cheaper to start. So lifestyle business is a term that you might hear uh, me using you know, once in a while. But if you want a business that gives you time freedom, location freedom, and also financial freedom, you know, the three key freedom, uh, that's what I call a lifestyle business uh, because you can really work anytime you want. You can work anywhere you want. There is no restriction and it'll give you the best lifestyle when it comes to having a business. Um, so that's what I mean by that. The next business that is very popular is affiliate marketing. Uh, and this is something that I do as well uh, with YouTube, right? And even with KDP. So both can be semi-passive by putting out content, right? You can put out books. The book will stay on Amazon forever and it'll keep making money year after year after year because there's existing you know, traffic going to Amazon. Same as let's say if you do affiliate marketing with a blog post, like on Google, you know, you put out the blog post, it's kind of semi-passive. There's existing traffic going to Google. Same as YouTube too, you know, you put out the video post and it's kind of semi-passive, although with a YouTube algorithm, it's different because YouTube kind of favors new videos a lot. And a lot of times the way it works is you publish a book, you get the most traffic uh, initially, and then the video kind of slows down significantly. So it's not as passive as publishing from my experience. Um, but the thing with affiliate marketing is it's hard if you don't have existing audience, right? Because the whole business model is that you have to promote other people's products and get a commission. So if you don't have an audience, then it's a little tricky. So you have to build it with a blog or YouTube. Uh, but the thing with KDP is there's built an audience on Amazon. There's already people going to that and you're just trying to show up in front of that, right? So it's a little different. Uh, YouTube and blog does take much longer to build up as well. With KDP, you publish one book, you start making money immediately. With YouTube, you publish one video, most likely you will not start making money. It took me one whole year just to get monetized on YouTube, just to get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. It took me one year of consistently pumping out videos. It took maybe like 30, 40 videos for me to get to 1,000 subscribers, okay? Just so I can start uh, you know, putting AdSense and making money on YouTube. And obviously you can still make money before getting monetized, but it takes way longer than KDP. That's, that's from my experience, but most of the case that is true, okay? So in conclusion, affiliate marketing can be great once it's built out, uh, but it takes so much longer to start earning money than with KDP. It is also less passive uh, from my experience. Once again, with YouTube, uh, you have to keep pumping out videos. It's just how it is. I mean, if you look at all the big YouTube channels, if it's truly that passive and they can just stop and keep making money, uh, but it's not, they keep pumping out videos because old videos die. Compared to KDP, old books, if you publish good books, it does not die. It often speeds up. So with YouTube videos, you publish a video and it does well and then it slows down and that's kind of the normal trend. With a book, if you publish a good book and it picks up reviews, it often speeds up exponentially over time. And so it's like the complete opposite. So that's what I like about KDP. Next, let's talk about day trading versus KDP, okay? So the thing with day trading is it offers no time freedom and you must work when the stock market opens. So the way it works is, you know, all these traders, you can't really trade when the stock market closes, right? So you have to trade when it opens. Uh, there's specific timing to it. And a lot of times if you're not living in that favorable time zone, like I lived in Hawaii, right now I live in Bali, right? So if you want to trade, you know, living in these different places, oftentimes people wake up at midnight, right? Or wake up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., whenever. When the stock market opens, you basically have to wake up and start working. So if you're not in the correct time zone, that's what you got to do. And is that what you want to do long term? Uh, for me, no, I don't want to wake up at midnight just, you know, just so I can start trading, right? So that's what I mean by not having any time freedom. You do not have the ability to work whenever you want to compared to KDP. Another thing with trading is you must risk a ton of capital to make a significant amount. It's high risk, high reward. So yes, you can make money. And let's say you made money on five trades consecutively. And that's great. You made a ton of money. But then, you know, the sixth trade that you make, you bet higher and then you lose that and you kind of blew out the entire profit that you made on the last five trades. That's what a lot of people do. And obviously, if you become good at it, that's you're not going to risk your entire capital on one trade. You know, you're going to have different risk management strategies. 
Uh, but for me, in my opinion, it's much more riskier uh, than KDP. And, you know, most traders lose money and those who do typically underperforms the market. So a lot of times people lose money with trading. And even if they do make money, it typically just underperforms the 8% a year return that you get on index funds. This is something that you can Google and you can actually look up like the stats on it. Most of the time, it's better to just buy an index fund and forget about it rather than spending, you know, working full time trading stocks consistently and you will do much better just buying index funds and forgetting about it. So if that's the case, then why do you even want to spend all this time trading, right? Um, so that's my conclusion is, you know, short term trading is very risky. You can win 10x and have one bad trade and lose it all. And you need significant capital to start. Uh, for me, it's not passive at all because you have to consistently trade. Um, and also you can't work whenever you want to, which is like the biggest thing for me. So that is why I still stay with KDP. Okay. So now let's talk about agencies. So agency business model is a service-based business, uh, which offers the benefit of low overhead, high margin, uh, type of business. So the great thing about a service-based business is that you're trading your time and your effort, uh, for money. So it's like a job basically. Uh, but the good thing about that is you're not really investing a ton of capital uh, to the business, right? Because you're investing time and effort rather than money. So, and you can often, you know, hire clients for $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month, even more if you get good at it. So you're making a couple thousand bucks a month uh, from a client without investing any money. So the profit margin is very high. And so that's what people like about agencies. And I think it's a pretty good business model as well, you know? But the thing with agencies, it's not much time freedom, uh, once again, because, you know, there's a lot of meetings, there's a lot of calls that you have to do with clients. Uh, let's say I want to go to uh, uh, an island in Bali, right? And there's barely no Wi-Fi. With KDP, I can literally stop, decide to not work for the entire time I'm on the island, and then I come back and I just resume whatever I'm doing, right? With KDP, you can kind of do that. With an agency and different business models, you can't do that because if there's no Wi-Fi, you can't get on meetings with your clients. And oftentimes it's, it gets very tricky. And another thing is the time zone issues too. You know, if you live somewhere like in Bali where the time is, you know, the exact opposite with uh, the U.S. And if your clients are on the U.S., then having meetings, you're either doing it late at night, early morning, but you got to do that, right? So it gets tricky. Um, one agency client can pay thousands of dollars and it's scalable. So that's like one of the best things about an agency. However, I have friends that does agencies and a lot of times, you know, you can get clients two ways. You can do cold outreach. So you can literally just cold email people and try to get clients, which I don't know how effective that is, but it's very, sounds very tedious. And, um, <clears throat> for me, you know, I get cold emails all the time from people who's trying to get me as a client and it's pretty, pretty damn annoying. Um, so another way, uh, which most of my friends do, most of my friends who has an agency, they don't actually do cold emails. They actually go and run ads to get clients. So the whole, you know, concept about low overhead uh, with the agencies might be true, but often my friends are telling me that they're running ads to acquire clients, which eats into their profit. So the point is you still have to spend money and nobody really talks about that. So conclusion is, you know, agencies can be a great way to make money online, uh, but it's basically replacing your nine to five job with another nine to five job. It does not offer true time freedom of working whenever you want to, uh, but it's still a great business. So in my opinion, agencies is one of the, the better businesses out there uh, if you're good at what you do. So I think agencies is something that if I have to start from scratch and if I didn't know anything about KDP, uh, it's, a, it's a business model that I would consider if I did not know about KDP. But since I do know about KDP, I would choose KDP. All right, so what about real estate, stocks, and crypto, okay? So this is once again, very, very popular. Well, crypto right now, as I'm filming this video, is just like tanking. Um, so maybe, you know, the whole perception of crypto changed in the past couple months, but before it used to be very, very popular. A lot of people switched over to crypto and try to make money and real estate and stocks. As we know, it's a tried and true way of making money. Very, very popular. 
Uh, but here's the thing, right? Unless you take incredible risk, once again, trying to trade, you know, individual stocks, okay? The average real estate and stocks uh, return is 8 to 10% a year. Once again, with index funds from stocks, with real estate, you can probably get a little more if you know what you're doing. Uh, but gaining 8 to 10% a year returns, although it's great, if you're trying to make money and if you're trying to achieve financial freedom from that, that is nowhere close to what you need to change your life. You can probably change your life in 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, if you're getting eight to 10% a year returns. But if you wanna do it faster, if you don't wanna wait 20 years for the compound interest to start picking up so that you can go and retire, then you have to build an online business. You cannot do that with real estate or stocks, okay? So that's the major thing that I see with this. Now, crypto can yield greater returns, but it's much, much riskier as we all know. And personally, I would not recommend investing more than 5% of your entire portfolio into crypto, okay? Now, the market affects the ROI of your investment a lot. Real estate, stocks, like even with stocks, I did everything correctly in theory by investing only in very safe index funds that, you know, generally promises eight to 10% a year. And then because of the, the past year, everything is going down. I lost pretty much like 30, 40% of my investment into stocks. And I say I lost it, but technically I didn't because I didn't sell the stocks. And I'm sure in the future, it'll come back up because I bought index funds and not really individual stocks. Uh, but still, you know, still it, the market affects the ROI a lot, and oftentimes you don't have any control. The biggest control that you have will always come uh, from your online business, okay? So the best way to create life-changing money on a consistent basis, regardless of the market, is by building a business. And a lot of times by building a business, you can get way more than eight to 10% a year return. You know, if you know what you're doing with a business, you can get 100% returns, even 1000% returns on your money. And that's exactly why if you're trying to make money, then it should be from an online business. But if you've made money already from your business, and if you want a passive way to grow that slow and steady, but grow that money even more, that's when you take the money that you made from your online business and put it into real estate, put it into stocks, maybe a little bit of crypto, right? And that's what wealthy people do is they use real estate stocks crypto as a way to grow their money even more after they create their wealth with your business okay and that's what i do too so don't try to make money from real estate stocks crypto make money from your business and then put it into real estate put it into stocks and grow it even more okay so hopefully that made sense and that's kind of my comparison of you know the different business models uh that is popular uh with kdp and i want to finish up with this okay there are very few businesses like KDP that offers all three forms of freedom. We kind of touched on this earlier, but the three forms of freedom is financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom, okay? Many businesses, all the businesses we talked about today will provide you with financial freedom, okay? You can achieve financial freedom from any business that we talked about, but often they lack either the time freedom or location freedom or both. A lot of business does not allow you the location freedom to work anywhere you want to, uh, especially if you're doing real estate as an example. Um, you can't you know, move around because oftentimes you gotta actually go to the property. You can outsource this, uh, but it's much, much harder. Uh, let's say you deal with physical products, right? And you have to take shipments to your place. If you're moving around all the time, that gets a little tricky. So that's why I like a digital product-based business, something that is purely online. All you need is a laptop and a Wi-Fi. Okay, and that, you know, with KDP, you can achieve a location freedom. Same as time freedom, you can work anytime you want to. Okay, so with KDP, you can work whenever you want to, wherever you want to. All you need is a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. And it is one of the most passive business I know of. You know, you do the work once and you get paid for life. Like I talked about earlier, a lot of times the book sales picks up over time rather than slows down compared to all the other content-based business like YouTube, blog, 
all of those slows down, but with books, if you rank it, and if it is a good book, it often picks up, which is absolutely amazing. So this is why I stayed with KDP after six years and why many others do as well. So this is my completely honest review on Amazon KDP. Obviously, you know, I teach KDP, so you would think that I'm biased, but it's something that I constantly ask myself all the time, is KDP the best business? I look at other businesses and see if it's better. And I really genuinely believe that KDP is one of the best, if not the best business to get started right now. And that's why I'm still with KDP. You know, it's not because I'm selling courses. It's not because, you know, I have a, a channel on KDP. If I feel like another business is better, then I would switch over and start making videos on that business. So I don't really have a, a personal attachment with KDP. I'm just doing KDP and publishing because I genuinely think it's the best, right? And that's why I'm here. So hopefully this video was helpful. And uh, if you guys do want to check out my complete publishing course, the link is in the description as always. And a lot of students are, you know, doing well. And also if you want to join my 100% free Facebook group mastermind, then the link is also in the description. You can join, ask questions, network with other publishers. And just by joining, you're going to get a free bonus, which is how to generate lasting income on Amazon KDP through what I coin as a book stacking. So this is a case study, okay? And how I built a multiple six figure uh, KDP business. So a little long of a video, but if you enjoyed it, leave a like to let me know that, you know, you like these kind of content. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. You know, the first couple hours of posting the video, I do read the comments and I'll try and respond to uh, most of them. And subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.